Watch out for those flies. Watch out for those flies if it's flying around. That's why it's important to start your day. Lord, anoint my head with oil. Anoint my head with oil. Lord, anoint my head with oil. Because you don't know which fly is where. Stay tuned for the latest message from Pastor Kevin Anthony. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the praise. Amen. Amen. I believe God is going to mess around with your head tonight. Seriously, I feel God is going to mess your head around tonight. Amen. Anybody wants to mess his hair? You want God to mess your head and mess your hair tonight? Amen. I promise you, he's going to mess you. Yeah, that's fine. Keep it to the I'll, I'll ask you. I'll serve custard for you for that. Thank you. To God be the glory. I really want to get into it tonight. I really want to get into it because our and tonight is breaking of bread. I believe there is something new that's going to happen in this place. If you're looking for information, I will tell you, please leave the hall. But if you're looking for God to speak to you, stay back. But if you're looking for information, I'll tell you, you might get it on Google. You might get it on through books. You might get this thing somewhere else. But if you're looking for God to speak to you, stay back. Anybody ready to receive? Yes. He's going to speak. Are you going to receive? Yes. He's going to give. Yes. Are you going to receive? Are, are you going to ask anyone, are you going to receive? Yes. Are you going to receive his word? Yes. Are you going to receive his word? Yes. In Jesus' name. The children are learning to say amen. Yes. That's a joy to know. That they understand at that lang in that age. Amen. In Jesus' name. God is going to fix some heads in this place. Amen. I thank God we have some wonderful nurses in this house. Specifically, nurses who are from maternity background. So, I'm sure they're going to contribute tonight to help me preach. So, uh, if we have to use a gynae specialist here who makes babies every day, we're going to ask them to demonstrate or something because I believe God is going to mess around with their head tonight. I promise you, I'll keep telling you that God is going to keep messing around with your head tonight to make it, listen, when I say messing around is he's going to recalibrate your head. Amen. He's going to recalibrate your mind in Jesus' name. Listen, if you quickly want to go to the washroom, go and come because I will not allow you to go. I'm going to lock this door. <laughs> For next one hour. If you want to go to the wash and go now, don't leave later. I would urge you, hold, you will not die. The bladder will not burst because he's here. There, I love that son, he's obedient. <laughs> oh, but I like that. Rather than he missed the meat of the message. You're free, church. This is not a church that is going to put you. If the son has set you free, you're free indeed. Come and look at somebody and say, you're free indeed. If the Son has set you free, you're free indeed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question. I want this to be a very interactive session here tonight. When you're worried about something, when you're tensed about something, when you panic, where is all these things happening? in your body physically. Where is these things happening? Where is the activity happening? If somebody who is worried, somebody who's panicked, somebody who's fearful, and somebody who's like fretting, I don't know what is going to happen. Where is all these things happening? In your mind? In your head here? How many of you see when it is worrying, your legs start shivering? How many of you think when you start worrying and your, yellow, and your ears go red? And that's where the problem is. You can see the worry here. No, it's here, right? 
most of the tensions, most of all the things, even if you're silent and somebody is not, somebody's talking to you, if somebody's sitting in front of you, even with your silence, a lot of conversations happening here. The conversation is not 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 happening anywhere else. The conversation is going through here. The picture is going here. It's in the head. And that's exactly what God wants to address tonight. Is this one. Why do I say this one first? Many of us, or I think almost all of you, well, I was not there in the delivery ward when you were born, but I believe all of us sitting in this room, when you are born, what comes out first? I'm going to use that natural to explain the spiritual. It is always the head comes out first. And then the other part of the body. Correct me if I'm wrong. What is the other way around? The legs out comes out first. What if the middle part comes up at first outside? What happens? Is it nice? Is it risky? Or is it like, okay, yes, it's going to happen. It's risky. It's always the head first. And I thank God that 14 years back when Judah was born, I was there. But I can use it. Thank God I was there. I can use that for my preaching tonight. When I was laboring for 10 to 12 hours, and I was in the delivery ward from right 12 till 9.54. Listen, boys, husbands in the house better know when, what time your baby is born, not just your wives. <laughs> Are you with me? Believe me, it's a joyful thing to see your babies born. And I thank God we live in this part of the world. They encourage the husbands to be in the delivery ward. Now, when Judah was born, he did not just pop out like that. No, he did not come out like that. No, it just came by. Now it is coming. Uh, two inches. What two inches? Three hours back, it only two inches. And there's only like one inch left. Another centimeter left. Listen, from inches came down to centimeter. And it was not coming. It was not coming. And when it started coming, I, I could only see this, this hair. Because it was very hairy. So I could see this one. And it is coming out and going inside. Coming out. I want to hold it. No, where she's trying to hold it. It's coming out. It's like teasing. But she's laboring. She's going through that moment. And the moment when the time of the, 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 the contraction came, the moment the head jutted out just a little bit, that's more than enough for the nurse. She just held. You remember when you swallow noodles? It just goes. Come on, guys. You guys look at me as if you've never had noodles in your life. The only difference is the noodle goes here, but the noodle that comes out, it comes out. Are you with me? And if you see the baby born, any husbands in the house who saw the baby born, the wives don't know because they cannot see. Yes, we have two dads in this house. How was it? You, you, you're relating to me what's happening? Correct me if I'm wrong, what did I say? They hold this part. They hold this part so nicely and so firmly. At the same time, they're very gentle. When they have a grip of this, listen, the body does not have to struggle. The body is aligned very well. It just slips through. And then you often wonder, how in that small opening, how did that body come out? Why? Head first. When the head is placed correctly, when the head comes out first, the body does not have to struggle. It just slips off. Are you with me? Listen, the fraction of a second, she's toiling for 11 hours. But the moment the head was in the grip of the, of, of the nurse, it just took a fraction of a second for the body to come out. And often enough we are saying, God, let the body come out first, then the head. How much so true in our own spiritual life? God wants to fix the head first, and then the body. And often enough our cries, Lord, my hand first. Imagine if Judah had to just stretch his hand like that. No, my hand first, hand first. Imagine the leg has to come. Come on, guys. And often enough, our struggle is, Lord, you fix the body, then the head. No, the Lord says, I'll fix the head first, then the body. Amen. Are you with me? It is not different in our spiritual life. I'll show it from the Word of God. It is no different. It is no different than the natural. Now, David in the Bible, I like this guy. He's a man after God's heart. He's one of our 
prominent favorite characters that I love. One of the prominent favorite characters. There's so much that you can learn. You know Psalms 23? Yeah. Anybody knows it by heart? Then what's verse number five? That's what I say by heart. That's what I mean by heart. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's the first part of the scripture. What's the second part of the scripture? He anoints my head with oil. That's the second part of the scripture. And the third part, please, I've just forgotten. My cup runs over. Listen, that scripture is like burger or like sandwich. You have the bread on top, then you have the meat there, and then you have the bread. All three together. But tonight, I want to go for the meat. He says, you anoint my head with oil. Now, why did he make that sentence? Why did he bring out even that sentence, God, you anoint my head with oil? By the way, can you remind me what was David's profession? He killed Goliath, man. So he was, of course, a warrior, right? No, he was not. He was what? He was a shepherd boy. What was he taking care of? Sheep. Now, this statement that he made, that you anoint my head with oil, is not just come something that came on top of his head and just, no. He learned it while he was taking care of the sheep. What do I mean by that? In those days, the Bible says, in those days, the shepherd, when they were taking care of their flock, when they were taking care of the herd, now, they would never take the herd in a closed environment like this. They would lead their flock through the, through the hills and through the valleys, through up to, in rough terrain. Now, <coughs> when they're exposed to natural environment of that nature, whether it's ups and downs, it is not, it's not something that is long the place that they will go. They will go into rough patches. Now, when they're exposed to rough patches, they're exposed to a lot of dangers. You remember there was, the Bible says there was a time that the lion and the bear attacked the flock? What did David do? Please go ahead. Tonight is it's, it's birthday or it's a gift for you. No, no. The Bible says he ran after the lion and he ran after the bear. But it just recorded once. But it was not that the lion and the bear that he was more concerned. He was concerned about something else. They were exposed to a whole lot of other things in the environment. And because of that, he would do one thing. He would anoint, he would take the oil. He, they would either use linseed oil or they would, some of the guys would leave, use olive oil. What they would do? They would pour it on their head and they would pour it in such a way that it begins to soak and begins to come down here and begins to run all over the till it is what? Very sticky. Why? Why? Because they were exposed, while they were in the environment, they were exposed to flies. So it was not the lion and the bear that was constantly attacking, maybe once in a while. But the regular things, regular routine of life, mundane life, what would happen in a normal day? The flies would do what? They'll be what? Buzzing around the ears, buzzing around the eyes, buzzing around the nose. What these flies would do? They would quietly come. If they found an opening, they would come and do what? Lay their eggs here. And after some time, when the eggs begin to mature, they would do our hatch and begin to do our, all those worms will find their way here. The ultimate was not this years. The ultimate was the hair. Have you seen the sheep when they have, when their head is under attack, they'll be like this. They'll be beating the head all the time. All the time they'll be beating the head because the head is, the head is, the head is not messed, the head is messed. And David knew that. If I only soak this place with oil, if the, if the fly, mm, it will not come and stick there. Why? If he gets, he gets stuck to the oil and there is no progress for them. Another reason that he would do is these guys would always have their head down. Would always have their head down and they would be grazing. They would always be grazing. And often enough in those terrain, there would be holes. And of course, there is one somebody sitting there to strike. But these guys, David was brilliant with this thing. Those people in that generation, in that time, what they would do? Wherever the, they, they would lead the flock, they would do what? Just oil that place. And every time these guys were grazing, and if somebody wanted to strike them, they never had the grip to come up because they would slip. So every time he's close to the wiper, he's just going past. He's not bothered. Why? Because he cannot come up because there is oil underneath over there. He cannot strike up. Why? He has no grip. Am I making some sense, church, tonight? 
Now, if you learn that lesson while he was shepherding his sheep. And of course, when his time came, he said, God, I want you to anoint my head with oil. It is not the lion and the bear that I face every day, but it is the flies that I face every day. Why? If, he said, head, right? Can you tell me, neck up, how many openings do you have? First of all, check if you have openings up. <laughs> check, 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 check. Please count. How many openings do you have? Some people have five. Some people have three. Some people have ten. Come on, check. Neck up words. How many openings do you have? How many holes do you have? Two? Four? If you read the scripture, the Bible says... The eyes is attached to the head. Come on, anybody's ears attached to the head? Yes? Ears are also attached to the head? Is your nose attached to the head? Come on, is your mouth attached to the head? Often enough, the attack is not the lion and the bear. It's the daily flies every day. It's the daily flies the grudge. It's the daily flies the taunting. Is a daily fly the insult? Is a daily fly the discouragement? Am I making some sense? Is the daily fly called depression? They're doing what? They're just wanting doing what? Listen, they, are, they cannot directly go and lay their eggs here. They will lay it here. Come on, am I making some sense? Why? The ultimate thing is to go here. But to do that, there's an entry. There needs an entry. There needs an entry. There needs an entry. There needs an entry in the eye. There needs an entry in the mouth. To do what? Lay the eggs. And in due time, when it hatches, it's already reached the head. Then you wonder, wonder why, why am I messed up today? I started the day so nicely, and in the middle of the thing, I'm, my mind is messed up. My mind is panicking. My mind is worried. But I don't know what's happening. I'm having this. I'm having that tension. I'm having this worry. Why? Because the opening has been opened up. Hallelujah. Are you there, church? I want you to pray tonight before you go home, even as a part of the communion table. Lord, I close the doors for all those flies that are flying around my head. Amen. Listen, it's not the lion and bears, it's the daily flies. It's the daily flies. It's the daily flies. You now the Bible says, in the book of Ephesians, it says what? Do not give room to the devil. Yeah? How many of you enjoy the noise or the melody, or the tune of the mosquito run. How many of you enjoy? Come on, guys. <laughs> How many of you enjoy? Oh, lovely. Come, please go ahead. Go. I love it. I'll... No, 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 no. If it comes near there, some, somewhere here close by, you want to give it a harder slap. If it, a guy will go and get a nice slap. You go, oh, what happened here? <laughs> what? How many of you, please, forget the, while you're sleeping. How many of you enjoy the mosquito on your hand? Oh, I love it, man. Can I take a selfie with you? No, you don't, come on. You wouldn't want to do that. Let me take a close up, close up, little macro. Like, yeah, nice. Nah. No, you wouldn't. You want to give it the hardest strike. You're not hurting yourself, but you want to kill it because one shot and it has to go. How many of you Yeah, you want to give it the hardest slap. That's exactly what the Lord says. Do not give room to the devil. You see a mosquito fly. Listen, how many times the lion is walking into your house? How many times the lion, the bear is ready with his claws outside on your walk in the street? No, it's the mosquitoes. It's the little flies. Are you with the church? Mm. Flies are going around. Mm. <laughs> Listen, church. Watch out for those flies. Watch out for those flies if it's flying around. That's why it's important to start your day. Lord, anoint my head with oil. Anoint my head with oil. Lord, anoint my head with oil. Because you don't know which fly is where. You don't have just one kind of fly. You have various kinds of flies. You move into a dirty environment, there are different kinds of flies. You move into another environment, there are different. You just don't know which fly. Listen, you cannot pray to the Lord and say, Lord, take away these flies. But certainly you can play, anoint my head with oil. Amen. Stop praying those prayers. Amen. Stop praying those prayers, Lord, take away the flies. But rather pray, Lord, anoint my head with oil. Are you with? Stop praying those prayers. God, I'm fed up of this fly. No, you say, God, anoint my head with oil. 
Are you with me? Because that's what is going to keep the flies away. The flies you cannot avoid. But certainly, you can ask the Lord, anoint my head with oil. That's what will keep the flies away. In Jesus' name. Because if you see the scripture, the Bible says that there is a constant war happening here. The Spirit of God wants to take over. At the same time, the Spirit of the world also wants to take over. Now, many, many years back, please don't look at my current condition. Many years back, when I, before I came to this part of the world, I was given into serious gymming. And, uh, serious, uh, and I had a proper dietitian. I had proper instructor to myself and all that stuff. And when I signed up to that play, uh, we did the weight train. Uh, the way, the, they, 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 they weighed me. And after that, the lady gives me uh, the diet for the whole week. And every time, after, before going to the workout, I had to come and stand in front of her. And after I'm going back, she said, uh, okay, fine. And she had given me a food log. You have to eat morning this, afternoon this, breakfast this, lunch this, dinner this, all those things. And I had to, and every week it would be changing. And I had a good time. That's why she learned cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to just you know, spice it up, right? So if, I, if somebody was maintaining my food program, a food log, if I had to maintain my own thing and say, uh, I had this today, I had that today, I had to that, then what about what's entering your head? See, it's very important to record. Listen, who's at the gate? Who's it? What did he say? Give new room to the devil. That means the devil will be around. But he says, don't give space. So whose lookout, whose responsibility it is not to give room to the devil? Whose responsibility it is? So the thoughts would come. Listen, you cannot say, Lord, I don't have thoughts. You cannot say, I don't have this and I don't have that. The thoughts will come. But it's up to you whether you want to take it or you want to reject it. Now, he says you cannot... Avoid those thoughts. The thoughts are going to come. But certainly, you can block or you can ent allow entry. That is still in your hands. If you're going to record what I'm going to eat, then you're also going to record what is going to entering inside. If you're allowed, or if you're going to record what is our diet, what is going inside, then we also need to maintain what is going inside here. Hallelujah. And I believe God is about to fix that up tonight. Amen. I want to turn your Bibles to, uh, to Exodus chapter 4. Just stay there and promise me you will go home and read chapter 4, chapter 3, chapter 5, and chapter 6. You will read chapter 4, you will read chapter 5, and chapter 6. You will read over the week. If you want God to fix your head, please go home and read this. This is man had an encounter with the Lord. His name is Moses. And it was not an ordinary encounter. It was a supernatural, never heard of, never seen that kind of encounter when the bush was on fire and it was not burned. And God began to converse with him. And in that conversation, chapter 4, he says, I want you to go. I want you to go to Egypt and bring my people out that they may come out of their freedom, they may come out of their bondage. And this young man, 80-year-old young man, he's conversing with God and he says, Lord, I'm not ready for this. I'm not, the, I'm not the right guy. I'm not fit for this. In fact, I'm not, for the, I'm not signing up for this. I, 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 you know, you, 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 you know my problem. You, 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 sorry. See, I have a problem. I have a speech problem. I cannot. And the Lord said, what is, what's in your hand? He said, the stick. So threw it down. He threw it down and it became what? It became a serpent. He said, pick it up now by the tail. He was not impressed. No, no, I'm not still ready for this. Okay. Take your right hand. Put it under your bosom inside here. Now bring it out. It was leprous. White. 
They said, bring it, put it back again. It became normal, normal, clean flesh. Still not impressed. No, Lord, I'm not signing up for this program. I know I don't have what it takes to go for that assignment. That's too big for me. I'm not going. I'm not signing up. The Lord does another third one. The water. You're expecting the pastor to give you all the four and all the three? Go home and read. <laughs> Go home and read. Go home and read the third one. Even after doing the third miracle, he says, now, I seriously can't speak. You see how pro such a problem I have? See, I'm finding it difficult to converse with you. But the Lord says, okay, I'll try somebody else. No, he didn't say that. I take a lot of courage and I take a lot of heart from that. God does not look at your perfection and set you up for the project. Amen. He takes you as your, with your imperfection and says, you're the guy. Amen. Listen, he did not say when you go through speech therapy, then come up. No, no, no. I want you the way you are. Amen. Don't give me a... Listen, if you read that scripture very well, actually God tricked him. God actually tricked him into committing. And often enough, you know, see, God is always tricky. How do you trick him? So beautifully. It's okay, okay, fine. You have a problem? Your brother is on his way to talk to you. He's going to hollow you. He's going to speak to you. I will put words in your mouth. You put the words in your brother's mouth. He will be. And actually, God tricked him into that. And rest is history. If you see, the spokesperson was never Aaron. It was always Moses. Yes. Are you with me? Listen, if God tricks you, thank God for it. I believe God is going to trick somebody here. Amen. I say God is going to trick someone here. Listen. He is going to trick someone here. He goes to Pharaoh. And he says, the Lord says, let his people go free. And uh, Pharaoh is asking, what Lord are you talking about? Which Lord are you talking about? Who? And he performs a miracle in front of him. The Bible says that agitated Pharaoh even more. Oh, these guys have got a lot of time on their hands that they're asking for freedom. They're doing all these tricks in front of me. The Bible says, from next day onwards, he made, listen, they were laboring for 400 years. Making bricks day and night with their feet. They were laboring. It was hard labor. It was not just one generation. It was generation after generation. It was generation after generation. They, when the baby was born, the son was arrived, uh, growing up. They were not signing up for college. They were signing up for slavery. Come on, guys. So it was set in their mindset. If, you, if the son is born or the daughter is born, whoever is born, the ultimate thing is what? Land up into slavery and labor and labor and labor and labor. And they labored for 400 odd years and they're still laboring. And then the Bible says, Pharaoh told them, from tomorrow, no more straw. The Bible says that the work became harder. And of course, when that thing happened, the whole people, the excitement was that we are going home free. The next day, when the work became harder, life became harder, life became more severe, they turned back to Moses and says, bad idea, we are not coming with you. When Moses heard that, what did he do? Of course he went back to God. I told you from beginning, it's a bad idea, God. I told you from beginning, I'm not for this. I told you from beginning, these people will reject. I told you from beginning, Pharaoh is not going to accept. Go to chapter 6, verse 28. He says, what? Well, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. It is not going to work. Chapter 6. Go to verse 28. Come on, guys. Chapter 28. Uh, chapter, verse number 28. And he said, what? And it came to pass on that day when the Lord spoke unto Moses in the land of Egypt. Listen, this guy is going through a difficult moment. See what happened. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord. Speak thou unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say unto you. And Moses said before the Lord, what did he say? Behold, I am of an uncircumcised lips. How shall Pharaoh listen unto me? Hearken unto me. Don't read further. See, when, 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 when Moses experienced personal breakthrough, personal, uh, what do you call, miracles in front of him, 
And he displayed the same thing in front of Pharaoh. The Bible says Pharaoh was not moved by those tricks. Listen, you may be having miracles in your life. You could be experiencing your own personal breakthroughs. Let me tell you, the devil is never impressed by those. Listen, by your breakthrough. Your miracles does not end up saying, oh, he's afraid of you. Not at all. Listen, this guy was on a speak of his life where he's experienced miracles. Now, how many of you put your hand inside and it becomes leprous and come out? And you pull it back again, it becomes fresh, normal flesh. How many of you will experience that? How many of you will take the cane that you cane your children with and throw it and become a snake and you pull it back? Come on, guys. How many of you will experience when the water... Come on. How many of you will experience God speaking to you? When God is speaking mouth to mouth. The Bible said this guy was in the midst of that and he has an issue. He's, he's, he's challenging the, 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 the enemy at that point and he's challenging Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is not at all interested. Who cares? The attitude that Pharaoh shot. Who cares about your miracle? Oh, I can do it too. Who cares? That was an attitude. And when God told him, go back, go back, go back, what did he say? No, no. I cannot go back. Look at what he says. I'm a man with uncircumcised lips. And next part of the scripture says what? How will Pharaoh listen to me? You know why? The problem was Moses was not the miracle that he enjoyed. The problem with, with Moses was not that he displayed the power of God over there. The problem with Moses was one thing. He had a slave mentality. And listen, Pharaoh doesn't negotiate with slaves. The moment they went to him, what happened? Make it harder. Pharaoh is not impressed with a slave who is experiencing miracles in his life to negotiate or talk to him. Listen, the moment, the moment uh, Moses walked into the presence of Pharaoh and asking for freedom, asking for freedom, asking for freedom, Moses, uh, Pharaoh could smell a slave. Pharaoh could smell somebody who is in bondage. Pharaoh, he said, listen, I don't speak to these guys. It's below me. That's what he says. How will Pharaoh listen to me? But thank God. God turned it around in the next chapter, verse 1. See what it says. That's why I said, God is going to mess your head tonight. What did he say? It's a continuation of chapter 6. That's why it starts with an and. And the conversation is not over. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made you what? A God. See, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. When Moses was telling God, God, bad idea. I told you from the beginning, it is not going to work. He's talking to Moses and he's talking to God and says, God, how can I speak to Pharaoh? Is he going to listen? No, he's not going to listen. The next thing God says, okay, I'll fix you first. He did not say, I will fix Pharaoh first. God did not say, I will deal with Pharaoh, then I will deal with you. He did not say that. In fact, God ignored. Many times we are praying to God. God is actually ignoring it. It doesn't matter. He was telling Moses, it's not about you. Look at somebody, it's not about you. As if he's giving news to God. I have a speech problem. As if God didn't knew from the first day. He was giving news to God. Pharaoh is not going to listen to me. As if God didn't know that before. Listen, most of the time in our lives, we are busy warring with God or busy conversing with God saying, God, fix my Pharaoh. All along, God says, I'll fix you first. Amen. Stop praying those prayers. God, can you fix my problem? You pray from now. Fix my head. Are you with me? Listen, that's what he said. God did not butter him. Oh, you're feeling hurt. Come, I'll, I'll massage you a little bit. Come, it's okay, it's okay. Come on. I know you're feeling bad. Come, come, come. No, no. He ignored him totally. He ignored that last verse. How will Pharaoh? He, ignored, he didn't bother to look at it, actually. He just looked and said, come in. From now, I'm going to make you a God. 
Now, if you look at that conversation that happened before, four, five, six, the conversation between Pharaoh and Moses was always in this direction, that every time Moses said, please, let the people. Pharaoh was a bully. Pharaoh was bullying him every moment, every time he was conversing. But from here, when God turned it around, when God said, now onwards, I'm going to make you a God. Can you please define what is God? Can somebody talk to me and say, come on, I want you to talk to me. What is God? Can you define God to me? God, come on. He said, I'm going to make you a God. So what is God to you? Authority. Sorry, superior. What else? Huh? Powerful. Mighty. Creator. What else? Wise. Fantastic. What else? What else? What is God to you? Come on, guys. Huh? Someone higher. What else? Let my people think. He was saying, let my people go. Now I'm saying, let my people think. What is God to you? What is God to you? God. You said, God have mercy on me. God, I will do this. God, do this. Can you, what is God for you? Sovereign, powerful authority. Can you say God, someone who's been in charge? Yes. Right on top. Somebody who's supreme. Yes. Somebody who's supernatural. Somebody, there is nobody sitting above him. God told him, listen, I'm making you a person in authority. I'm making you a person in power. I'm making you a person in charge. Amen. All along, before this to chapter 6, he was going to God as a slave. Please let the people go. Chapter 7, when God turned around and said, listen, you're no longer a slave, but spiritually in charge. Amen. Chapter 7, he said, you're a God. God was saying, listen, all along you're a slave. I'm fixing you first. I'll not fix Pharaoh. I'll fix you. Now more slave, but you'll have a mindset of a person who's spiritually in charge, spiritual head. Amen. You know what after that? There were 10 plagues. Now, if you look at all the 10 plagues, you look at all the 10 plagues, Whether it was frog, whether it was locust, whether it was lice, whatever the ten plagues, all those objects that were used at that point, whether it was a frog, whether it was a lice, listen, you know, those were gods in the kingdom of Egypt, by the way. You know what happened? God brought those gods down. The same God that these guys revered and worshipped, God used Moses to bring down their gods. Yeah. And every time their gods were under attack, Moses would go back to say, can you entreat your God, please? Moses became the bully. Come on, guys. Are you being bullied? Then tell God, fix my head. Yes. Amen. Even as you partake of the communion table, you're going to pray and ask God for grace. You're going to ask God for grace. God, would you heal my head tonight? When God made him a God to Pharaoh, he never negotiated. He just said, let my people go free. All along, he was negotiating. See, when it's a slave mentality, you'll always be negotiating. But when you're on the other side, you'll not be negotiating. He's just agreeing with me. You'll not be negotiating. You will be directing. Amen. You will be dictating. Yes. Are you with me, sir? And every time there was a problem, every time there was a play, they would write, read. Pharaoh would run. Can you entreat your God? Have mercy. Lots of frogs. I'm fed up of these lice. Come on, guys. Anybody enjoyed lice? No. Anybody enjoyed lice? No. And rest is history. Listen, God wants you to be a bully. Listen, God wants you to be a bully. He wants the situation to be bullied by you. Not the situation bullying you. Listen, not the sickness bullying you. Not the, come on guys. Not the spirit of the, the spirit of the world bullying you. In your thoughts, in your intentions, in your heart. Listen, you need to be a bully. But that is only going to happen when God fixes this. Amen. The Bible says that you and I are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. But with a slave mentality, mentality you'll always have a complaining mindset. 
But when God fixes you, know, it's no more compelling mindset. It becomes a conquering mindset. Amen. You cannot be praying and say, God, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. And have a slave mentality. And have a complaining mentality. Of course, the enemy is going to do what? Ignore. Even if you have a miracle in your life, if you have breakthroughs in your life, you may have I mean, all these things in your life, but if you have a slave mentality, he says, listen, I'm not impressed. Listen, devil is never impressed by our miracles in our lives. Never impressed. Never impressed. But the moment you shed the complaining mindset and have a conquering mindset, listen, you begin to believe the devil. Hallelujah. Listen, a slave mentality, listen, when he went to God, he was like, no, I'm not, it's no, no, you know, these guys are difficult, you know, people are difficult, you know, like, no, like, whining. <laughs> when you're a slave, you'll have a whining mentality. When God touches your head, it becomes a winning mentality. Yeah. Listen, when you stop whining, then only you start winning. You cannot be having a whining mentality and say, oh, victory is mine, victory is mine. Listen, when you have a victim mentality, you can never live a victorious life. You need to allow God and say, God, heal my victim mentality. That's how Moses went with a victim mentality. How can you be talking about a victorious Christian life when you have a victim mentality? You're going to ask God for grace. God, I'm partaking, partaking of the communion table tonight. Listen. You need to shake up the beast into the fire. You need to shake up this victim mentality. No, it's going in the fire. It's not going to stick on me. Are you with me? You're going to tell the Lord, anoint my head with oil. I'll give one more. When you are having a slave mentality, the mentality or the mindset or the attitude will always be surviving. I just want to survive this season. I just want to survive this day. Somehow, Lord, I don't know how to survive. I just want to survive this day. You were just, God, I just want to survive this season. Somehow, somehow survive this week. Somehow, Lord, I don't know. Survival, survival, survival. But when God touches you, you know, it's no more surviving. It is no more surviving mentality, but a surplus mentality. Mentality. I'll have me explain before you clap. Hold on. Keep a clap for the next one. <laughs> Why I say surviving mentality and surplus mentality? For 40 years, the Israelites were in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, they never knew what is surplus. They never knew what is abundance. Why? The food was for the day. The supply was for... Just survive this day. Live for the day. But the moment they entered the promised land, come on, child, are you with me? When the moment they entered the promised land, listen, let's pick up a favorite dish in this church. What's a favorite dish in this church? Come on, pick up anyone. I'm oh, sorry? Oh, I love that. <laughs> a Filipino guy saying. A Filipino guy. Listen, you're, you're no more half, you're three fourths. <laughs> biryani, okay? Imagine, for 40 years you're having biryani. For 40 years you're having biryani. Get up in the morning, biryani. Get up in the morning, biryani. 40 long years. Biryani, oh my gosh, what is wrong? 40 long years in the wilderness, surviving one day up, one day at a time, with what? Biryani. But the moment they landed in the promised land, biryani stopped. They had fruit for the first time. Imagine how it would have tasted. Lime also would have tasted awesome that day. <laughs> Come on, <God. laughs> Oh my God, you'll be dripping. Oh my, I love it. You know what God did in the promised land? He said, now you will sow and I will bless. It was no more survival mentality. It was not living for the day. He says, whatever you sow, it will be surplus. <laughs> Look at what Jesus Christ said. I've come to give you life that is surviving him. I've come to give you life, and it doesn't end there. But life in abundance. That is surplus. Are you with me, sir? He did not just come to give life. Thank God he did not stop over there. He said, I've come to give you life, and life in surplus. He is the God of the exceeding. He is the God of the abundant. Above all that we can think and above God, we can ask. He's the God of the exceeding and the abundantly. He's the God of the surplus. Listen, Jesus was a man of surplus. Yes. Yes. 
few loaves of bread, few fish. Leave aside the men, uh, leave aside the women and the children. They were there at that point in time. But the Bible records 5,000 men. Can you tell me, was there surplus that day? Or he exactly, five, no, 5,000. No, no, no. He did not make 5,000. He made surplus. Are you with me? Listen, if you look at the life of Jesus, he never had an issue in his head who he was. While he was fully human being, he was fully God. He never had a thing in his mind, am I God today? No. You, you put him in any situation, he knew who he was. That's why he said, I know where I come from and I know where I am going. I have not lost so much so that even the demons knew who he was. Have you come to torment us before time? Hallelujah. Jesus, he had his head in his place. Never lost, even on the cross, he did not lose his head. Are you with me, folks? Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to ask God for grace, even as we partake of the communion service. Lord, heal my head. You want to pray, God? As you told, did to Moses, you do it to me. This is going to make you to jump out of your seat. Go to John chapter 10, verse 33. 33 onwards. John chapter 10, verse 33. If this verse does not touch your heart, go home right away. John chapter 10, verse 33. John chapter 10, verse 33. See, he says, And the Jews, Jews answered him, For a good work we stone you not, but for the blasphemy, and because that you, being a man, you make yourself as God. Go to the next word. Jesus replied back and said, He answered them, Is it not written in your law? Is it not written in the holy book? Is it not the book that you follow? Is it not written in that? Amen. You are God. Amen. Go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. He said, if he called them God, see what he said. If he called them God, to whom the word of God came. The scripture cannot be broken. Is the word of God coming to you right now? If the word of God is coming to you right now, he said that you are God's. The only difference is not the, not the big G, it's the small G. That means you're still in charge. Yes. Yes. One of the versions says, if the message of God comes to you, then you are God. By the way, who is speaking? It is not John, the gospel writer. It is Jesus speaking. What did he say? Whoever received or who got the word of God, to whom the word of God came, to them he calls what? Gods. And listen, gods don't talk rashly. Gods don't talk foolishly. Gods don't talk carelessly. Gods don't say, I didn't mean it. No. Come on, guys. Imagine for a minute if God said, I didn't mean what I said. Gods know what they are saying. Hallelujah. Listen, when you have a slave, slave mentality, when you have a slave mindset, sometimes the prayers, sometimes you make those prayers are actually, actually stupidity. Everybody went quiet. Nobody's saying anything. But when God begins to heal your mind, when God begins to put your head in its place, you no longer move in stupidity, but you move with smartness and sharpness. Yes. Are you with me, church? Listen, when you have a slave mentality, you live and you walk in ignorance. But when God puts your head in its place, you no longer live in ignorance. You don't walk in ignorance, but you walk in intelligence. Amen. Listen, you're going to pray. God, even as a part of the communion table, I want you to take off the thing of stupidity. I want to be sharp. I want to be smart. You're going to pray, God, 
I'm shedding off, I'm walking out of ignorance. Reason Bible says, my people are destroyed because of what? Lack of knowledge. That means ignorance. Listen, ignorance is not your portion. You're going to pray, God, even as a partake, I want to be an intelligent man. Hey, listen, David was an intelligent man. I will round up with that word. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16 quickly. I've got two, three minutes left. Don't rise up and pray and we'll break bread together. First, First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel. Because I'm not going to repeat this word next week. This is one off. Look at somebody's one off. Go to verse number 12. You remember God told Samuel to, to, to go to Jesse's house to anoint somebody from that from that from that house to be the next king who's going to be replacement for Saul. You remember that scripture? Yeah? So Samuel was there in the house and he lined up all the sons of Jesse and God rejected them straight away. Long story short. He says, he asked him, is there another one? He said, yeah, yeah, there's one more. Unnamed guy. Yeah, he's taking care of the sheep. Call him. And they called for David. Look at verse number 12. And he sent and brought him in. That is David. David, he was what? A ruddy. And of a beautiful countenance. Who says only women can be beautiful? <laughs> of a beautiful countenance and handsome. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Listen, all the men in the house, if it means for you to go to the gym, get into shape. Before the anointing, get it. <laughs> Before the anointing, the Bible says he was handsome. Before the anointing, he was... Come on, guys. If it means for you to apply, apply some lotion and look a little handsome and fair and lovely. Yeah, all oh, lovely. Thank you. Listen, Christians are not supposed to be having a sorry face. Oh. No, you're supposed to be handsome and beautiful. In other words, you're supposed to be presentable. Am I making some sense, sir? Listen, before he was anointed, he was a skillful musician. What has God given in your hand? Brush up on that. Sharpen your skills. Sharpen your gift, what God has given you. Hallelujah. Go to the next part. He says what? And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, the big ass spirit, he came upon, okay, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day onward. So Samuel arose and went to where? Ramah. What does the Bible say? When the, he took the oil and poured it over his head, and the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. Now, by the way, why was he anointed? Why was he anointed in the first place? Why was the ceremony taking place? Because that ceremony was the appointing or the anointing for the replacement of Saul as to be the next king, right? That was the ceremony. God anointed him to be the next king, and the Spirit of God was resting upon him from that day forward. And you read the scripture further down. He went back home and he went back to take care of the sheep. He went back home still to carry the cheese for his brother. He went back home. He didn't wake up in the morning and said, Hello! Guards! Coffee! He did not find any soldier around him. He didn't have any kind of security. He didn't have any kind of he didn't have any crown. He didn't have a robe. He didn't have anybody there to give him a massage. He went back to doing what he was doing. Listen, if you're saying, God anoint me, God anoint my head. Listen, when you wake up in the morning, don't say, Lord, where are my soldiers? Where is my security? Life continues. Amen. He never got up with a spirit of entitlement. Oh, I'm entitled for the king. God anointed me. Where is my this? No, no. He went to do what he was doing. Some scholars say he would have been 16, 17 years of that point in time when he was anointed. But by the time he was appointed, how old was he, by the way? You think your pastor is going to give you that? Find it out in 2 Samuel. Find out what's the age of David. 
He waited for some decades for him to be anointed. Now look at this. I will leave the last point, and I pray that you catch this. He was anointed to be the king, right? And the king is supposed to be living where? Sure. The Bible says, next moment, Saul was demon-possessed. Who did they look for? Why did they look him? Because he was a skillful musician. Listen, there were a lot of other musicians in town. You think only David was the only guy? No, there were a lot of other musicians. But this guy was a musician who had the anointing. He, had, he was a musician who carried the presence of God. Now, when, listen to this. When the anointing is resting upon you, you don't run for the palace. The palace runs after you. You don't run and say, where is my palace? Where is my throne? Where is my crown? Where is my position? Where is this? Where is that? Where is this? No, no, no. It runs after you. Are you with me, church? What is it that you are running after? Stop it. As the Lord anoint me today. He says what? And the Lord anointed him that day. And from that day onward, the Spirit of God was resting upon him. He never chased the palace. The palace was chasing him. He never, listen, he played the harp. David, uh, the, the Saul was delivered. You know, say, where is my crown, Lord? Guys, delivered. No, no, no. He went back taking care of the sheep. He went back carrying cheese stiffen for his brothers in the army. And did the palace find him? The palace was attracting him. The palace was attracting him. He was not attracting himself to the palace. Come on, are you with me, church? The palace is coming, coming, coming. Stop chasing your visions. Stop chasing your dreams. Stop chasing all those things. that Allow the Lord to heal your head first. Those dreams, those visions, those promises will chase you. Are you with me, church? Stop chasing. Stop running up it. Don't tell the Lord, Lord, fix my body. No, fix my head. When God fixes this, all the promises, all the visions, all things will come to fulfillment. Amen. Are you with me, church? In Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't chase after the promises. Promises need to chase you. Amen. It's just the Bible says what? And the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him that day forward. Tonight you all pray, God, anoint me in a brand new way. Amen. Let's arise and pray. Let's arise and pray. Listen, partake of the communion table tonight. Partake of the communion table with, with an understanding. Do not partake of the communion table as a ritual. Another religious obligation. Because the Bible says to partake of the communion table, it is the power of God. The enemy cannot understand. He's never understood and he can never, he can never understand. It's a mystery, the Bible says which the enemy cannot understand. But tonight you're going to ask God for grace. Spend time for yourself. Don't look here and there. Don't be, don't be distracted. This is the moment of healing. Amen. This is the moment to say, God, even as I partake of the communion, because healing proceeds from the communion table. He said, by my stripes, you were healed. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. What he went through. He said, do this in remembrance of me. You're going to ask God for grace. You still have a slave mentality? You're going to ask God for grace tonight. And you're going to pray, God, anoint my head with oil. You anoint my head with oil. You anoint my head with oil. Even as I partake of the communion table tonight, Lord, I want you to anoint my head with oil. You will anoint, pray, ask God for grace. How do you anoint it? The Bible says, all the promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are yes and amen. It's a good word. We sing it, we pray it, we dance it, we do all kinds of But how many of us are enjoying the promises of God? God gave a command to Adam, be fruitful and multiply. Forget the multiplication. Sometimes it's a struggle to even be fruitful. But tonight you're going to pray. You cannot be fruitful with a slave mentality. 
You cannot be fruitful. You cannot be multiplying with a mind that is a slave mentality. Just live for the day. Surviving mentality. You will ask God for grace. God, even as a part of the community, but Lord, you will make for my surviving mentality. Heal me for my whining mentality, complaining mentality. From a mindset that is all the time worrying and panicking, worrying and panicking. God, I want to be healed tonight. We want to pray, God. I believe there's a surplus anointing in this place. There is a surplus anointing in this place. He has come to give you life. Life is for you. Abundance is for somebody else. Abundance is for someone else. You give it to somebody. You're going to pray, God, I want to receive the anointing of surplus. A surplus anointing. You're going to pray. The surplus anointing will break the cycle of debts. I want you to partake with our understanding. God, I want my, I want to be healed that I may have a, an anointing of a surplus, surplus anointing, surplus mindset. Not just live for the day, somehow manage. No, nothing known as manage. When God anoints you, you're left with abundance. You're left with abundance. You're left with extra. You're left with extra. You're left with surplus. Pray, 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 pray. You receive the word of God. When the Spirit of God is resting upon you, when the anointing of the Holy Ghost is resting upon you, you don't chase after the palace. The palace chases after you. Why could he face the lion of the bed? Because he was a king inside the heart. God made him a king. Crown does not make you a king. Saul had a crown, but he was no longer a king. Even though David did not have a crown at that moment, he was a king. He could take down a lion and he could take down a bear. He could take down Goliath. Why? Because he was a king. Pray and ask God for grace. Pray and ask God for grace. Ask God for grace tonight. The grace is available to live like a king. The grace is available to live like a God. The Bible says, to whosoever the word of God came, he called them gods. He called them gods. You are supposed to be spiritually in charge. You could be serving a wicked boss, but you're supposed to be spiritually in charge. Love you, God. Pray, pray. This is your moment. Pray. Pray. Before you partake of the communion table, before you partake of the communion table, pray. Pray with an understanding. Pray with an understanding. I'm receiving my healing tonight. I'm receiving my healing tonight. I'm not leaving this place unless you touch me, God. He said, be renewed. Be transformed with the renewing of your mind. You're going to ask God for grace, right? Lord, renew my mind. That's what it means to anoint my head with oil. You take the word of God and you anoint your head with oil. You take the word of God, it will renew your mind. You take the word of God, it will change your mind. Pray and ask God for grace. You would be a man of understanding. You would be a woman of understanding. You would not be dull in understanding. You would not be slow in understanding. You would not be a Christian who is a duffer, but a Christian who is smart, who is intelligent. Wisdom. God speak with wisdom. Wise. But 
I pray, Lord. I pray for an anointing in this place, a surplus anointing. Someone, Lord, I pray for a surplus anointing in this Lord. A surplus anointing. A surplus anointing. An anointing of abundance. Surplus peace. Surplus joy. Surplus wisdom. Surplus is not just money. Surplus is not just wealth. Surplus could be in the area of your health. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Of a sound mind, the Bible says. A slave mentality will always be a very poor, piddly mentality. Small thinking, very short sighted. Pray. Even as the Lord anoints you here tonight, even as the Lord anoints you here tonight, tomorrow nothing may change. Life would be the same. Walk till the word comes to fulfillment, till the promise comes to fulfillment. What are the promises of God that He has released over your life? Go back, go back home. Go back, revisit those promises. And ask the Lord, Lord, anoint me. Anoint my head with the oil of these promises. He'll come back to life. He'll come back to life. Love you, God. The thoughts of God are thoughts of peace. But the thoughts of the world, the thoughts of this world, the thoughts of the enemy are thoughts of destruction. Make sure the flies are not war. When they're flying around your head, you will not give an entry to it. You are in charge. You are in charge of that opening. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your ears. Plead the blood of Jesus over your eyes. Plead the blood of Jesus over your mouth. Love you, God. If you believe, say aloud, amen. amen. If you believe, say aloud, amen. amen. If you believe, say aloud, amen. amen. I said, believe, say aloud, amen. amen. So go ahead.